We're back uh, at Silver Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time to look at what the papers are saying. Uh, quite interesting uh, uh, headlines on the front pages, and I can't wait to uh, introduce our guest analyst this morning, Ezekiel Ingaetuk. We call him Otuekong right here in the house, who will do justice to that. Um, Mr. Ingaetuk, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning, always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right, all right. Uh, good to see you in that all now very famous uh, uh, setup you have there behind you. Uh, always an inspiration to us. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you. All right. Let, let's quickly look at uh, what the papers are saying, starting with the Nation newspaper, which has some interesting headlines. And uh, the paper has really given us blow-by-blow -blow account of what it calls the PDP crisis. Um, I always point that out. Uh, the Nation has a lead story, PDP crisis. Uh, or Tom attacks Atiku as Mimiko rejects job. This is quite a blow. Uh, or Tom attacks Atiku as Mimiko rejects job. Setback for PDP presidential can candidate in Benue. Ex Ondo governor vows not to ditch Wiki. All right, so that's a fair story there. Court to Kogi, don't disrupt Dangote's operations. Uh, marketers raise petrol price to 179 naira per liter from 169. Uh, I know somebody who said yesterday he spent 20,000 naira to buy fuel and was asking us to check on him to see if he was well and still alive. Uh, the next one, no admission offer has been cancelled, says Jam. Online Lotto Casino others to pay taxes directly to FIRS. Security alert, no reason for evacuation of U.S. citizens is coming for the federal government and CBN changes naira notes. 1,000 naira, 500 naira, 200 naira to wear a new look. Apex Bank plans 3.23 trillion naira cash mop-up in 100 days. All right, so um, we will be queuing in the bank uh, to change our notes, I think. for <laughs> I don't know how. I guess we'll, we'll, we'll tell us some more about that, especially for those who have a lot of money at home. <laughs> um, next to the leadership, four months to 2023 elections, CBN moves to mop up 3.23 trillion naira from circulation. Recalls 200, 500, 1,000 naira notes gives Nigerians 46 days to exchange old notes. Exercise will check currency hoarders, EFCC. Timing of currency change not right, analysts. IPAC CSOs disagree over Apex Bank's decision. Those are the writers to that interesting headline. More from the leadership. PMB seeks expanded trade relations beyond gas exports. Concessioning FG names preferred reserve bidders for Abuja Lagos Kano airports. Terror alerts we won't be stampeded, FG tells US government. IPAC CSOs reject salary increment for President, Governors, others. NEDC presents relief materials to Bauchi flood victims. Mimiko joins the Tiku's opponents. Or Tom demands apology from ex-VP. And uh, China honors 51 Nigerians for outstanding contributions. Very interesting stories on the front page of leadership. We go over to the punch on Thursday. It leads with this story. 2023, Lagos Kaduna Rivers Kanu voters. Top INEC register. Lagos Kaduna Rivers Kanu voters. Top INEC register. 2.7 illegal, a million illegal registrants deleted. 23 registration officers under sanction. INEC to display register from November 12 to 25, seeks cooperation. More from the punch. Buhari eyes over $1.3 billion trade with South Korea. NDLEA freezes 20 billion naira in Socialites 103 bank accounts tears as brt vehicle kills trader apprentice laborer fg announces preferred bidders for airports uh, flooding experts warn of epidemic as corpses float it's quite gory dss arrests terror suspects u.s evacuates non-emergency staff cbn plans naira redesign to counter counterfeiting kidnapping and the EFCC rearranged suspended AGF over 109 billion naira fraud. Stories on the front page 
of the punch. The final paper this morning, this day, leads with uh, that economic story. In ambush of vote buyers, ransom takers, CBN voids Naira notes by end of January. Redesigns 200, 501,000 Naira notes, says 80%. Currency in circulation outside banks vault. Uh, a lot of writers that won't take time, uh, all of them for want of time. FG is tackling growing inflationary pressure, says finance minister. Says crude oil theft, subsidy deductions responsible for poor 2022 budget performance. Uh, oh my God. Uh, laments effects of rising diesel costs on food prices highlights, highlights uh, measures to make ports attractive. That is the nation's finance minister. Obajana court halts move to shut down Dangote cement by Kogi government. Atiku takes presidential campaign to United States. FG, Nigeria won't be stampeded by US, UK travel advisories. And uh, those are some of the top stories on the front page of this day. Um, I'm tempted, tempted Ezekiel Yaitu, to start with uh, uh, the CBN story. Um, you're a politician. Can you, do you understand what the CBN is saying? Um, I'm not in any way yeah. saying that you've been a part of it, no. I'm not saying that, sir. Yeah. But, but do you understand what they're saying, what they're doing, as it affects, uh, affects the forthcoming election and vote buying? I'll, t I'll tell you that I very much understand it. And, um, but I, I would like to take it from a completely different perspective. My friend said something that his father said that may the man who is always trusted never lie against you. And I find that statement extremely instructive. May the man who is always trusted never lie against you. The reason is simple. Whatever he says, everybody says, no, the man never lies. That's the truth. Now, bring that into what is going on today. The government have brought themselves to a point where people just never trust them for anything. So that even when they come up with what should ordinarily be a very good policy, you find people being very skeptical. You find people being very apprehensive. You find people trying to find out exactly what, what they are up to. You know, the Bible says, let not your good be evil spoken of. And, you know, right now there's a lot of money in the in the in the homes of people or outside the banking sector and when they say 80 percent i tend to agree with it and that's not healthy for the economy the banks have to be re-regulated to become you know strategic development partners with the government but what you realize is that government people are those who are the main owners of banks so the interest of banks cannot be properly sanctioned by government because that is going against their own personal interest. Service is no longer the essence of seeking public office. All this is spread to the point that now when you say bring these monies in so that we can have control, you can't just get out a hundred million and pay for ransom. And it's got to come out from somewhere. They've got to trace it. And in fact, during the process, you may even be able to track, you know, put trackers. They are selling things like Technology has become so simple that you can put a tracker on a note and nobody knows about it. And with that, you can tell where it's going. That's where you have a government that is out to serve the people. But what do we have? Government that you don't even trust what they are doing. Worse still, we bring in all this political season. Everybody brings in money into the system. And then you discover that election time comes and you have no access to, I mean, um, uh, the sort of money that is okay. I'm running election, and there are certain funds I'm going to spend because I have a threshold of one billion to spend for my election. So if you, are, if, you are, if you do your calculations well, you discover that you are going to keep about 45 percent. Some people say a lot more, depending on how much you have. You know, for that election day, being able to mobilize all your, you know, every polling agent that you have, you may need to mobilize them to be able to go to the place effectively without being hindered in one way or the other and also to have something to eat so it's not like they were going to buy something or look for money or something you know just the official and legal money you may discover that the government in power have access to how they can get out the funds 
and the opposition may not have access on how to get out the funds. These are the apprehensions, the anticipations. But outside of that, if they were to be honest and sincere, I believe it would ordinarily be a very, very good policy. My prayer is that they will know that one day they will be on the other side of the divide. So let them do things that are in the better interest of the generality of the people and not things that will serve their personal interests exclusively. All right. Uh, we'll stick with this day. And uh, one, one of the government officials who is of particular interest to me uh, happens to be the finance minister. Um, what some have observed would be that um, uh, apart from really announcing how bad the economy is doing and apart from maybe announcing how much the government wants to spend, uh, announcing you know how much the government wants to borrow, announcing how much the government is owing, and maybe giving excuses, um, she doesn't really do much. Uh, of course, she has a lot to do in terms of behind the scenes, uh, you know, planning and everything uh, for the economy. Though we have a budget office and an economic planning ministry, you know, but um, I don't see the finance minister doing other much other than announcing these things and you know not really coming up with solutions. Now, she has made another announcement and given some more excuses. Uh, FG is tackling the growing growing inflationary pressure, is what she says. You know, FG is tackling it. Uh, more excuses. She said the uh, crude oil theft and subsidy deductions are responsible for the poor budget performance in 2022. Um, so, I mean, she's also talking about high diesel costs and its effect on food prices. Um, uh, do you think that the finance minister has gotten away softly? You know, people don't really talk about her as much as um, they talked about maybe probably Kemi um, are, are you? Are you? What's your assessment of her performance? You know, um, every minister, unfortunately, you know, one of the things I am campaigning on in my state is that nobody that has been a commissioner should come near the seat of power of the governor. Because for you to be a good commissioner, you have to be the one that you have no opinion. You are the one that your boss says jump and you say how high. You are the one that has absolutely no understanding of what they call executive decision taking, the systems, the processes. You don't understand any of those things. You are just a very good yes boy, and then you are a good commissioner. You know. Now, when you when when I look at the ministers as well, I, I do not know to what extent the minister of finance has an independent mind to be able to give opinion on matters or take issues decisively outside of what does the party think, what does the president want. So, so as much as your, your duty is to, to kind of actualize the mind of, of you know, most clairvoyant, where you, you read the mind of your boss and then you bring it into practical demonstration and actualization, you know, to manifest what's in the mind of your boss, which you believe is in the larger interest of the people. So long as that is not your paradigm, then you are just... So it, that's, it becomes difficult for me to assess the, the performance of any minister whatsoever. You know, but then you can be smart enough to know that your role is to be able, as a finance minister, to be able to look at the finances, so to speak, generally, when you say finances, holistically, the economy, of, of, of the state and see how monetary policies would help, you know, say fiscal policies will help to give directions to where we are and where you network closely with the central bank governor to kind of have a, that marriage between the fiscal policies and the monetary policies so that we have an economy that works. So I want to see the function of the finance minister through a buoyant economy through policies that promote, you know, the sort of economy that we want to have, diversification. Now, let me run into very, very quickly, because of time and issue. Why are you the one coming to tell me that our economic performance is hindered or made difficult through something like oil theft? When it has been established beyond every reasonable and any reasonable doubt, that the oil theft is perpetuated by the institution. So are you now telling me that you are the problem of your administration? 
if it's something that is within your uh, outside your control i can i can even start to sympathize but they've told us that you can never undertake bunkering at that level without the direct connivance uh, in fact not even connivance collaboration of the institution so finance minister are you not aware of this where are you are, are we living in two different worlds so uh, all she's saying to me is absolute um, let me not use the wrong word but I, I just look forward to nigerians waking up and thinking right leaving sentiments aside yeah but and basically i took uh, you would agree with me that you know, before now, I'm not even talking about this current uh, republic, even before now in the 80s, um, when you had, uh, you know, successive administrations, both for the civilian in Shagari era and the, the military who appointed civilians as uh, ministers, you know, um, that, 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 that Nigeria's finance ministers had personality because you're brought to that office to have some sort of uh, bring you a wealth of experience as a financial person to bear, you know, even in recent times, you can look at Ngozi okonjo who was there. We can look at Kemi, the embattled Kemi Adeoshi, who was there. They had ideas. They, they had ideas. They would even share these ideas on what they think is the way forward. And you would realize and you could sense that they were always pitching these ideas to the president to help him make informed decisions about the economy. Oh, Mr. President, we can't go beyond uh, this point of borrowing. Mr. President, I think um, we need to we need to do this, otherwise we are going to, at least let it be on record that you said it, or oh, we need to do this, because the president has advisors. In America, you have, for instance, a White House chief of staff who would always be having the president's listening and advising him. You know, so, but, but I mean, for, for now, what we see is it's just announcement. You know, no personality attached to this woman which to me is worrying. You so know, I, let me... This yeah, is response to what you said about being a good commissioner, being a, you know, just there to do what the president... But as a finance minister, you also have some ideas. That's why you're there. Let me, let me tell you, for Madame Okonjo Iwela, who happens to be my boss, boss for life, one of my greatest inspirations, I could understand. Because, I mean, if you know where she was coming from, she had a job and she could go back easily. The person that surprised me positively, I will say this, is Madame Kemi Adelshu. When she came on board, I mean, I had very little expectation of her. I was like, oh no, this is like an anticlimax. But she positively impressed me. And unfortunately, we had to do what we did to her because of what? NYAC certificate, not even these other ones that people are looking for certificates left, right, and center. And uh, let me not go into it because it's a major talking point in Akwai Bomb State. So anything I say in a long certificate can be taken out of context, you know, back home and I'm running election. So let me leave that for now. But the current, min <laughs> the current minister of finance, I, I don't know whether it is, I don't know what the problem is, but there's there's something missing I, I don't know I, I don't know how to really place her there's something i don't know whether she doesn't feel secure enough or i don't know her level of knowledge and exposure i've tried to dig into her past but you see i don't think her past in any way worse than that that of uh, lower than that of uh, kenya Doshu. i think she just needs to wake up to the fact that there's posterity ahead of her and there's going to be a comparison there's going to be Madame Okonjo Iwala, there's going to be a girl show, and she's going to be there. And she doesn't want her children to look at that comparison. I think there's still a little time left for her to wake up and come and be the finance minister where you don't only give reports, but you inspire directions, get advisors, they will tell you what to do, get public coach. My son is excellent at it, I can loan her, my son. Get public coach and with expert advisors, and then you can come and start to inspire hope in the faces of Nigerians, and that could just help us not only to give her a better image, but to also give us a better financial and fiscal direction and policy thrust. All right, it's quite interesting. Let, let's go over to the nation, uh, which has, uh, I think, given more coverage than any other paper or, or over what it calls on what it calls uh, the PDP crisis. And as we can see from the front page of the nation, uh, PDP crisis or Tom attacks Atiku uh, as Mimiko rejects job. 
um, it seems to be uh, the, the, the house of cards that is, is falling down, I don't know, in, in the People's Democratic Party. With uh, Mimiko being appointed the uh, Presidential Campaign Council uh, chairman or the, uh, or the leader and uh, now rejecting it. This was after there were some um, pushback. You know, we had some pushback by some members of the party who were against that move. Um, is, is this, are we nearing the end of the road for, for the PDP as a party and a formidable force in Nigeria? <laughs> You know, on one hand, it's such a shame, such a shame, because um, uh, I don't belong to the APC PDP camp. I don't belong there. Our party had a, has had challenges on presidential candidates, but we belong to the new generation. You know, I've always painted three boxes. The first box has two people in it, APC PDP, the old and the on the old. The second box has two people on it, Peter Obi and um, Kwan Kwaso, the old in a new scheme. And then the third circle was supposed to have, you know, two people, SDP candidate and an ADC candidate. Unfortunately, right now, we have a problem with ADC. So for me, the first box of old on old is out of the way completely. But I have been looking forward because each of them attacks different markets, you know. The, the new on new was to attack the new market, but the new on old, talking about Kwan Kwaso and um, Peter Obi, they are coming into the new market and they are doing very well. So I was looking forward to APC not having monopoly of the old market, but PDP, you know, kind of taking a good chunk of it, that leaves a better chance for either the new on old or the new in the new. So. I'm not happy that PDP is just is just becoming a problem itself. And I've said it in this place time and time again. You know, the memory of man is treacherous. We forget a little too soon. We forget what happened to Jonathan when Amechi pulled out with five governors and they lost the election. A man like and like Wike is not just Amechi. Wike is not reverse state. Wike is an a one man institution. Wike has his hands in different states and different capacities and capabilities. Wiki alone can take on the Southeast and fund them. This man goes to Lagos State and gives us 300 million as if it's nothing. Does it make it right? That's not the point right now. But the point is that if you look at Wiki as a man, then you've lost the plot, okay? Now, I think that Mr. Atiku, for the sake of him helping to have a better chunk of that market of the old and old, you should please wake up. Be concerned with Wike. If Wike for now decides to, let me tell you this, let me tell Nigerians this for free. If Wike now decides to join Peter Obi, he's not going to concentrate on the South South. I can tell you that for free. He's going to go up to the North. He's going to activate a lot of capacities within the North and be able to hold the North for Peter Obi. He's going to be able to bring a kind of working relationship. I don't know how it's going to be with, with one or two other parties that have a good hold on the north. And Peter Obi that you say is a paper tie guy is just on the south. I think you are dismissing him, you know, wrong enough. Or if he you know measures up with someone like maybe the SDP candidate, and they are, please know that I'm not talking as a party man, I'm talking as an analyst, so my party people forgive me, you know. If you set up an understanding with like the SDP candidate, which has a, a good understanding of the southwest and part of the north, and comes in, there will be a fight that will remove APC and PDP, and that is my. All right, Ezekiel, here to get, uh, we'll try and get back to to you if you're there. Um, let's look at more stories. Uh, still, uh, from the Nation newspaper, the situation between. Uh, uh, Kogi State and Dangote uh, uh, Cement Company. Uh, I almost called Dangote State, but I've now remembered it's a company, not a state. But the state is taking out the company. Uh, the actions of uh, the Kogi State government, well documented. Uh, a court has told the government to to stop disrupting Dangote's operations, and um, it's something uh, interesting and interesting development. Uh, Ezekiel Yatu, do we have you back? All right, we'll try and get it back to him as uh, time goes on. Um, but let's look at another one, uh, some details as far as the uh, CBN's attempt to change or plan to change the Naira note design. 
uh, is concerned. Well, we try to get back to Ezekiel and Yai to come. This will affect 1,000 Naira note, 500 Naira note, and the 200 Naira note. It's quite interesting. Now, for some people who are uh, who are cashless like me, uh, it's no problem. We'll just uh, spend the, the little one we have on, on, on us, and then we we'll go to the bank and we we'll draw ATM anytime they decide they want to put it out to the public. And I think it, it goes to show sometimes it's good to, to go cashless. You know, I believe in, in, in being cashless because it just saves you from a lot of stress, really. It does. But um, Naira notes are to get a, a new features from December 15 is what we hear. Uh, this is um, what the Central Bank of Nigeria said yesterday. That's Nigeria's Apex Bank, for those of you who are watching from outside the country. Uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria Governor, Gordon Mayfield, he told reporters that the 1,000 Naira note, the 500 Naira note, and the 200 Naira note uh, um, denominations uh, will wear new looks uh, as part of measures to mop excess cash from circulation and tackle inflation, is what he said. This is uh, also, he went on to say that, um, uh, well, he addressed a, a conference, a news conference in Abuja, and he said the Apex Bank will start issuing the redesigned notes from December. 15 and that uh, existing uh, notes will cease to be legal tenders by January 31, 2023. Uh, according to him, the president, Mahmoud Buhari, has approved uh, the redesign, the production, and circulation of the uh, banknotes. Now, analysts are disagreeing with that. If you want to read some more on that, you can go to uh, the this day you read some more on that. You see what they're saying there. Quite extensive coverage also. Uh, on the front page of leadership, quite extensive coverage on that as well. I'm sure uh, what the analysts are saying, uh, um, some of that might include, some of that might include, uh, you know, the fact that there'll be a cost, a high cost of designing uh, these notes. You know, it's not going to come for free. You know, it's not going to come for free. So that is something uh, to look at as well. What will it cost Nigeria's federal government uh, to to print new notes, to design and print new notes? How much? What's the budget uh, for that? Can the country afford to do that at this time? You know. But then again, like we read from some of the papers, and like our guests have said, the effects on um, you know vote buying uh, and uh, you know election more practice will be will be huge. Also. The effect on crime in the country, especially the crime of kidnapping uh, and the crime of uh, banditry, uh, will be also huge as well. Terrorism will be huge as well because you have to go to the bank <laughs> to to exchange the money you have. You know, you have to show your face. Uh, but will this end insecurity in the country? Uh, is what um, remains to be seen. All right, is what remains to be seen. We hope that uh, we can have our guest back on the line as soon as possible and then we will allow him to do justice to uh, to the headlines. Um, do we have him back? All right. Well, let's look at some details on of one story on the front page of The Nation. Um, what I was asking Ezekiel and took before he went off uh, abruptly, uh, the Kogi State situation with Dangote Refinery, and you can see it in the top left corner of uh, the paper, uh, caught restraining the Kogi government from further disrupting uh, Dangote Cement's operations. Uh, the Obajana refinery incident has been uh, quite well documented with people storming the place and uh, chasing the workers of Dangote away. Well, um, the court has ruled that that is not a method to seek redress in such issues. You don't just go to uh, a corporate environment uh, and chase people away. You actually should approach the courts. Uh, is it clear you took, you took, uh, are you back with us, please? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, fantastic. Nice to have you back. Um, so, uh, according to the nation, uh, a federal high court in Abuja has uh, restrained the Kogi state government and its agents from further disrupting the operations of Dangote Cement PLC and its associated companies. And this is still in relation to the uh, Obajana incident, which is uh, well documented. Uh, Milot, the Honorable Justice Bintan Yanko, yesterday also in that ruling, restrained the state government and its agents uh, from further shutting down, disrupting or suspending the activities of Dangote Coal Mines Limited and Dangote Industries Limited, located in different parts of um, Kogi State. Um, what are your thoughts on this and also 
the whole entire incident. I mean, when you talk about the state government uh, masterminding such, you know, an action on, on, on a corporate organization. Okay. Now, the issue is, as one who is, um, you know, aspiring to be a state governor, there are many dynamics you need to understand about the state. For instance, one of such dynamics is the resources that should accrue to your state, which a lot of times things have been, the policies and the practices have been such that many times the state is shortchanged. You are, you know, kind of saddled with the responsibility of making sure that the social infrastructure in the state is good enough for the generality of the people but you realize that there are some industries that have, I, I hope you can still hear me. Can yes, you hear me? Can. Yes, yes. Okay. A lot of times you realize that there are some industries that um, kind of bring a lot of um, weight, so to speak, uh, on, on the infrastructure of the state. You know, the mega trucks, they ply the, the, the inner road, the, you know, the roads of the state. And you are... Uh, you know, saddled with the responsibility of maintaining such roads, and then you realize that the resources that come from such companies uh, probably go a lot to the national, and you have a little to take from it. So you cannot, as a responsible state governor, just keep quiet and watch it. You've got to take steps. But then it comes in the caveat. You cannot also unilaterally take steps that are not law, you know, in conformity with the law. As at today, the law in the court is one place whose laws you must respect and the judgment you must expect. So if the court says, don't disturb them again, you have to stop. But activate the second mode, which is going to seek redress legally as well. So the state government cannot do anything extrajudicial. They must follow the legal processes. And where they feel that they have a right and that their right has been infringed upon, they should get a good lawyer, go to court, and get their rights activated. It reminds me of a, a, a state government, you know, or not far, or a state not far from where you are, uh, where supporters of the government or governor chased away uh, EFCC staff who they attempted to apprehend uh, an official of the state government, <laughs> who might end up becoming yeah. the next governor. But, I mean, yeah. some would say it's politics, politics of wits. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you and know. Well, in this case, it's a little more than politics. It's about resources. Who controls the resources? How it is managed? What is mine? Where there's fairness, where there's equity, and where there's injustice. It's a matter of balancing all, but you must do that legally and officially and formally. But, but I mean, uh, what, what I said was politics of wits. That is, um, you know, sometimes you have to be a strong man and use some, some crude methods to, to achieve your aims. Yeah, it's part of, you're right, it's part of, you know, it, it, politics is a very intricate thing. Even governance, there are several tools. In the toolbox, you have the good, the bad, the ugly, you know? And of course, I always believe there's also the excellent, that which is better than good, you know? So I, I think that um, in every family, you know who does as a bad boy, he has his um, uses. But All you right. need to use it very, very um, wisely. All right. If not so, um, a good thing can turn out really bad. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, I like the, word, the way you put it, the excellent uh, uh, you know, tools in that toolbox. That's the best way to go about it. Uh, Ezekiel Kanyarchuk, it's been great having you on the program uh, this morning. I'm sure you've seen the latest INEC uh, figures and statistics of registered voters from your state. We will look at that some other time, but uh, wish you all the best. That's a promise, and I hold it to it. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And that's Thanks the size. So much, Thank you very much. And that's the size of, of the press. When we return, we'll uh, have a first major conversation looking at the fuel scarcity situation ravaging parts of the country. Stay with us.